Welcome to Comics League Indie Wednesday. I'm Jared, and today we are returning to Invincible. Now you may be wondering, Jared, I thought you covered Invincible last week. Well, I covered the animated show. Now I want to talk about the comic. Finally got the comic trade. I told you I was going to do that. And I covered it, and I, I decided to go over it today. Thanks to Tevia for su suggesting this. So, you may be wondering, how does this differ from the animated show? For, for those of you that didn't watch the animated show or watch the show but didn't read the comics. So, it's very similar. Like, very, very, very similar. However, some of the events are different. For instance, the Guardians of the Globe are not slaughtered by Omni-Man like the first issue. It's not until, like... A good portion into the story, like I'd say about halfway through the story when he actually like slaughters the their version of the Justice League, essentially. They change how Mark essentially met the teens, the, the, the teen titans, essentially, and that it's not during the alien invasion. It's during like an encounter with the Terror Twins. I was honestly really surprised about how how different this is from the show, which I'm fine with because I like when it has like... When they have like uh, when they're able to tell the same story but you know in a unique way, but I was like, oh okay, this is interesting at least, and at least they at least it did something new. That's what I appreciate a lot because it's like I right, remember th this came before the show, but I, what I'm wondering, what I would love to find out is why did they change the the order of events when they went from comic to show? Because I I, I think what it was honestly is that when they were making the show. They really wanted to add a sense of mystery, which is, I think, why they at least moved the events of Omni-Man killing the Guardians of the Globe, like, to the very first episode. It was like the, I think it was like the end of the first episode is when the Guardians of the Globe show up at their watchtower and then get slaughtered. So I'm like, okay, I could see why you wanted to do that. Because you want to have, like, an ongoing, like, mystery throughout the entire series. And you really, in modern TV, you want to be able to have that, have that hook because... The first, like, couple issues of the comic and then the first, like, I'd say, like, 90% of the animated uh, first episode is, like, making you think, okay, so Omni-Man is just another version of Superman. He's super powerful, but he's super good. Then he slaughters the Justice League, and everyone's like, okay. So I, 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 I now, now you got me. Now I'm hooked in. So I, I really like that. That's really cool. So they changed a lot of stuff. I like the art. The, the art by Ryan Otley is fantastic. It's definitely like it, it definitely is cartoony. And I was honestly surprised at how well the animated show actually translated the art style too, because it, it looks very familiar when it comes to like uh, when it comes to translating the art style to uh, from the comic to the show. Cause a lot of animated shows struggle with that in that. Okay. So basically the way I'm, I'm going to explain it this way. A show, a comic's art style, a lot of the times, particularly if it's something as distinct as like Invincible, is that's part of the show's identity. I mean, that's part of the IP's identity for the most part, particularly when you have a, a group of artists that have been on a book for like a significant amount of time. Kind of like in Jeff John's Green Lantern run, you have Evan Reyes and Ethan Van Skyver were like the main artists for that series. So when you think of Jeff John's Green Lantern, the art, you think of those two artists. So it was, it became a large part of Invincible's identity. Now, when you go to the comic uh, of Invincible to the show, the reason why I think it, it works really well is because it still feels like you're essentially watching a motion comic, kind of, in that the art is very, so they made, it's the best. I think it's one of the best examples of art, of comic art to, animated tv show art i think i have seen in a series in a long time and i really appreciate that they took the time to faithfully translate because a lot of shows try to do that but they sort of miss the mark a lot of the times another great example of translating comic art to animated this is the movie sense but it's the same concept is so when they brought so michael turner drew the book when they brought back supergirl into into dc it was called Superman, Batman, Supergirl, essentially. And so that was Michael Turner's art. And he has a very distinct art style. Now, when you look at the the show, or the, the movie, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse, it's pretty much Michael Turner's art style. I mean, they took some liberties with it. And it, it's not 100% translation, but it's 
pretty freaking close. So it still has that Michael Turner feel when you're watching the show. It's like all the character designs, all the like distinct portions of Michael Turner style, the Batman with the ginormous bat ears, which I don't like. I like the shorter, shorter um, ears. But essentially, that's what that leads to is that it's it feels like you're just watching the motion comic of that uh, of that particular storyline. And that's what I think this does very well. And, and then also, really, it's just it's it's they, they definitely um, managed to capture in the show the comedic nature of the book because it's pretty much it's pretty much the Teen Titan show, except way more mature and way more bloody. That's the way, honestly, I, I would cover it. And I definitely see the comic goes 100 percent that definitely shows that parody of the DC universe. And a lot of the times the parody of Watchmen, too. So it's like a lot of this is just parody of DC and Marvel. And I, I think that was the point of it. And Kirkman definitely um, translates that super well. And let's see. Another th what else have I liked? Uh, in, in other words, I think I like the order of events. And, and now go going back to changing the order of events. Honestly, I dig the order of events in this way more in the comic, way more than the show. Because you spend significantly more time getting to know Omni-Man and essentially seeing him as the Superman. Then it's more of a shock halfway through the book when he's slot when he's revealed to be a villain. So th that's why I feel like the reveal of Omni Man being like an agent sent to subjugate Earth. That reveal is a little bit more effective when you get to like the way they structure the story here in the comic, as opposed to the TV show. Now, to be clear, I still like the way the TV show did it. I still see the argument for why the TV show structured it in that way. And I understand why, why they had to change some things. It's not to take away from the quality of the show. I'm just saying I prefer this way a little better for the reasons I mentioned. Now, in terms of uh, if, if this is going to be, uh, by the way, if this is going to be a returning feature on, on the on the show, let me know in the comments if you guys want, want me to cover more, more of the series. Basically, the first um, issue is him get, getting his powers as he's throwing garbage. Uh, the show did a great job of showing that. It's basically introducing the world uh, where Mark Grayson is a comic book fan. I'm going to flip through it real quick. I, 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 I'm going to review the first issue right now just to give you guys sort of a sort of a taste. So it's like Mark Grayson. He's it actually starts off with him being a superhero. And then it goes to like a week late for four months ago. He's like, he's going to school. He develops his powers and he, he, um, he starts off in this really, really, really cheesy suit because he doesn't have a name yet. So he's got a, essentially is so the, the suit maker essentially tells him, okay, come back to me when you have a name for your superhero identity. That way it'll kind of like inspire more of like uh, more of my suit design so I can make it so it fits your identity. So he leaves he goes to school and he gets into a fight with a bully and the principal goes, you got to be careful. You're not invincible. And that was, and that's what leads to him becoming invincible. Actually, I'm, I'm going to cover more issues. Issue two is when we get Omni-Man sort of truncating the version of his origin saying, I was sent here to like help uh, the planet develop and uh, attain utopian status. He's lying. This is later in, in this is revealed later in the comic. He's kind of changing the story a little bit to manipulate Mark. And he explains being a superhero and all that stuff. And then we get Mark Grayson meeting the teen squad. I call them the teen squad, but that's pretty much pretty much who they are. They're pretty much the Teen Titans. So okay, this is called Teen Team. Man, these comic books really like their alliterations, don't they? And then uh, we have Mark, we essentially have uh, have essentially marked uh, um, be becoming a member of the team. That's pretty much it. The, those are the first two issues. If you guys like that series, I'll go into more detail on it. It's just really what this was. I wanted to do is sort of do a video talking about how the comic major, uh, not majorly, uh, honestly, not it's not that different from the show, but uh, the, the differences between the show and the comic and cover a couple of the issues. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys want me to cover more of Invincible, Drop in the comments. Next week, I'll be talking about Jeff John's Geiger uh, under the suggestion of Man of Steel V2. Thank you, dude. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, this video. Thank you for watching the Halo um, the 343 discussion video. I know that everyone's upset about what 343 did, but might as well just... Uh, you, you, essentially, I'm trying to be as positive as possible, but 343 is making it really hard. But on that note, 
Hope you guys enjoyed my review of Invincible, the comic. I love it so much. I'm going to definitely be um, c coming back to this series periodically. And I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, again, I hope you guys en enjoyed this video. And thank you to Tevia for suggesting the video. And if, and uh, and once again, drop in the comments any particular indie book that you guys would like to have me cover because chances are it will be on the show. And I'll, give you, I'll even give you a shout out. On that note, stay at work, everyone, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.